ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثا وبث وبعث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي تهدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين all praises due to allah who has blessed us with islam and has blessed us with the teachings of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once again we see the teachings of the quran and the teachings of our prophet distorted sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this terrible atrocious crime that's committed at the westgate mall in kenya where people in the name of jihad storm into a shopping mall and start indiscriminately shooting and murdering innocent people and drawing this or pointing this out in this khutbah there are those who will ask or state that people are dying here every day Why isn't anyone talking about them? The people being killed in our inner city areas. Young people gunned down in gang violence. These issues have been addressed are being addressed. But at the end of the day, this is a sad and tragic reality that doesn't distort the teaching of our religion that doesn't create confusion in the minds of our young people <coughs> such of those who go on the internet and then they become confused and begin to think that indiscriminate murder somehow has a place in our religion those who are dying in our inner city areas are not creating that confusion and ambiguity and distortion concerning our religion similarly there are those who will point out that the united states military every day in some part of the world either by drone strikes or by bombings or by other actions or killing muslims or the israelis in the occupied territories of palestine are killing muslims why aren't you speaking out against that and as we said there are those who speak out we have spoken out on that but at the end of the day again that 
does not distort the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the world. But when people who claim to be representatives of that legacy, the Muhammadaic legacy, when people who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and then they go and murder indiscriminately, this and then it's broadcast all over the world as front page headlines, looping 24 hours a day in the various news broadcasts, then this creates confusion. It distorts the reality of the teachings of our religion. And so we have to remind ourselves and remind any who will be reminded about the teachings of Islam and the lofty standard that our religion places on the sanctity of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, <clears throat> وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى أَثَامًا Those who call on no other God along with Allah, nor do they kill the life that Allah has sanctified, except for just cause. And just cause is retribution for murder, or spreading murderous sedition in the earth. Nor do they fornicate or commit adultery. Those who do so, engage in one of these crimes. Yalqa athana. They will meet the punishment of their deed. May Allah Ta'ala spare us. So Allah Ta'ala reminds us, though they do not kill the life Allah has sanctified. Allah Ta'ala mentions again, مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَ عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَنَّهُ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنْهُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْأَرْضِ لَمُسْرِفُونَ That because of the first murder, Adam's eldest son murdering his younger son, we are ordained for the children of Israel and everyone after them, that whoever takes an innocent life, or takes a life for other than retribution of murder or spreading murderous sedition in the earth is as if they have murdered all of humanity. And whoever saves an innocent life is as, as if they have <laughs> saved all of humanity. And our messengers have come to them with clear proofs. Even then you find many of them going through the earth in excess. Yani excessively killing, brutally killing, indiscriminately killing. These are con condemned by Allah, both in general, as both of these uh, verses indicate any life. They don't, keep, they don't murder the soul Allah has sanctified anyone, regardless of their religion. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ النَّفْسَ Whoever murders an innocent life قَتَلَ نَفْسًا Any soul But it's also, there are also specific teachings Which is why we also want to reiterate these teachings Because for every innocent non-Muslim That are killed By these advocates, so-called advocates of jihad. 40 or 50 Muslims are killed, if not more. Bombings in marketplaces, <coughs> bombings of masjids, of rival factions, bombings of police headquarters, be through twisted rationalization 
Well, the, the police are protecting the Kufr regime and the regime is working on behalf of the Americans and therefore the Americans are Kafir, so the regime that's working on their behalf is Kafir, so the police that are protecting the regime are Kafir, so their blood is Halal. When in reality, the economic state is so broken down and dismantled and destroyed, it's the only job this poor person can, can find, is as a police officer. When Allah Ta'ala reminds us, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسًا وَفَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It's as if they've murdered all of humanity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasizes in the context of killing a Muslim. لَقَتْلُ مُؤْمِنًا أَعْظَمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ زَوَالِ الدُّنْيَا Killing a believer is graver with the law than e eradicating, wiping out the entire world. Is greater with the law than wiping out the entire world. This is what our religion teaches. <coughs> and each and every one of us, we have to start by impregnating in the depths of our consciousness or impressing into the depths of our consciousness the gravity of what we're being taught. Because these fitan, these tribulations, there are Muslims whose lands are afflicted with these trials and tribulations where Muslims are murdering each other who if you asked them five years ago, this could never happen here. This could never happen here. So don't be so safe from Allah Ta'ala's decree to think it could never happen here. That we can never be filled with so much animosity towards our fellow believers that we would be moved to begin to think of taking their lives. It could happen here. You can have Shi-Sunni friction existing in this country that exists today in Syria or Iraq <coughs> or parts of Pakistan. It could happen here. You can have Muslims who might be from the same profession. They might all be Sunnis, but they're so antagonized and they're so estranged because of political realities in the Muslim world. They can start thinking of taking each other's life. Just as now they insult each other. Go online and see what those Muslims who support the coup in Egypt say against those Muslims who are against the coup. And what those Muslims who are against the coup say against those Muslims who are for the coup. And they're all Muslims. They all say la ilaha illallah. And they're all Sunnis. It could happen here. Never think you're safe from Allah's decree. But prepare yourself. Prepare your heart. Inoculate yourself against violating the sanctity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established for all human life. I was told of a young man, a new convert, who knows little or nothing about Islam, who was thinking until he was reduced to tears by his very thoughts, thinking of killing the people in his masjid. right here in California because of their innovation. A convert who knows nothing about the religion but whose mind and whose heart have been so poisoned <coughs> by this poison that is flowing through our ummah that he arrives at this torturous state of mind and state of heart. 
our Prophet وسلم, the first thing he mentions in his farewell speech the first thing he thought of taught was the sanctity of the blood and we'll be going many Muslims to the site where he uttered those words during his farewell pilgrimage. Oh people, again, all of humanity. This was an address to humanity. Oh human beings. Verily your blood, your lives, and your wealth, وَعَرَادَكُمْ and your honor عَلَيْكُمْ حَرَامٌ is sacred to you حَتَّى تَلْقَوْ رَبَّكُمْ until you meet your Lord كَحُرْمَةِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا like the sanctity of this day you are in which was a Juma and the day of Arafah combined and the sanctity of this month you are in which was the Hijjah, one of the sacred months, <coughs> and the sanctity of this land that you're in. This is our religion, brothers and sisters. This is Islam. And this is what we represent in the world. As the world descends, descends down these slippery slopes, we have to be the people standing firm. We have to be the people uncompromising in our beliefs, in our teaching, in our, in our religion, in upholding this, the legacy of our Prophet in this world. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With no excuses. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يزال المرء في فسحة في دين من دينه a person will continue to have latitude in his religion as long as he is not shed on blood that's unlawful to shed. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In terms of killing Muslims, killing each other, reflect on his words, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli rasulillah. Man qatala nafsan, man qatala mu'minan, yalqa allaha maktubun bayna aynayhi ayisun min rahmatillah. Or kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A little confused at the beginning of the hadith. Whoever kills a believer. Man qatala mu'minan will meet Allah, yalqa allaha with it written across between his eyes. Maktubun bayna aynayhi ayisun min rahmatillah. I have despaired of Allah's mercy. I have despaired of Allah's mercy. So brothers and sisters, Islam is calling us to a high road. And this is, not, this is not a road that's impossible to try. One of the excuses given by those who throw these teachings aside, they do it to us. So the alleged justification for this ram murderous rampage in Kenya was that the Kenyan troops came into Kenya and they're killing our innocent people. Well, what about a person who saw his people killed by Christian invaders for 17 years. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abdul Qadir al-Jazair, who witnessed the French murdering his fellow Algerians and resisting them in real jihad for 17 years until he saw the unleashing of a scorched earth policy, burning the fields, 
poisoning the wells, raping the women, putting the people in the concentration camps, murdering people indiscriminately. He witnessed that. And when he realized that resistance would be futile, he surrendered. Rahimahullah. And he was honored because he honored the prisons. He didn't cut off the heads of the prisoners. He honored them and treated them with dignity and respect. He was honored. Then he eventually was in exile in Damascus. And in 1860 in Damascus, after the Christian population had grown restive, an army of Druze and many of the Muslims were riled up against the Christians and they started indiscriminately killing them in the, some of the Christian quarters of Damascus. And there's various explanations why some were spared. But will interest of time doesn't allow us that. But Abdul Qadir al-Jazairi, who was in exile, and he saw these innocent people being murdered, he gathered them into their house and he gathered his troops, his fellow Algerians, who had come into exile with him. And he stood, put them in his house until thousands of them were crammed into his courtyard. And when it became unsanitary, he personally escorted them to the citadel in Damascus. And he set up guard around them and he protected them from the murdering rampage of the mobs who were after them, putting his life on the line. And when he was asked about that, we'll read inshallah what he replied. Rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, that which we did for the Christians, we did to be faithful to Islamic law and out of respect for human rights. All creatures are part of God's family and those most beloved by God are those who do, do the most good for his family. All the religions of the book rest on two principles, to praise God and to have compassion for his creatures. The law of Muhammad places the greatest importance on compassion and mercy and on all that which preserves social cohesion and protects us from division. But those who belong to the religion of Muhammad have corrupted it, which is why we are now like lost sheep. And then, Shamil al-Daghistani, another Mujahid. These are the Mujahideen. When Shamil, who had been exiled to Moscow by the Russians, who had resisted the Russians in Daghestan and in Chechnya for years, he was exiled. When he heard of Abdul Qadir's saving 11,000 Christians from murder by mobs and fanatics, he wrote to Abdul Qadir, May God be pleased to clothe his servant with power and faith. Abdul Qadir, the just, greetings. May the laurels of distinction and honor always bear fruit for you. Then he said, I was stupefied by the blindness of the functionaries who committed these excesses, forgetting the words of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is unjust towards a person I have granted my protection to. The dhimmi or the mu'ahid. Whoever commits a wrong against him or takes something from him without his consent, let him know I will be his accuser on the day of judgment. You have put into practice the words of the Prophet and set yourself apart from those who reject his example. May God protect us from those who transgress his laws. And then Abdul Qadir, he wrote back to Shamil at Dakhistani. What I did was merely obedience to our sacred law and to the precepts of humanity. Vice is condemned in all of the religions, for to be led by vice is to swallow a poison that contaminates your body. When we think about how rare are the real champions of truth, and when one sees ignorant people who imagine that Islam <laughs> is about severity, hardness, excess and barbarism, it is time to repeat these words. Patience is godliness, trust in God. Patience is godliness, trust in God. These are our examples. These are the people who bore the standard of Islam. 
These are the people we follow. We don't follow someone who is, is, is a victim of modernity and all of its internal contradictions. We follow people whose lives were shaped by prophetic teachings. We follow people who had internalized the full, broad, and vast meaning of the Sharia. We follow people who purified their souls so that when they engaged with the religion at an intellectual level, it was through the prism of a purified heart, a rectified heart, and a purified soul. These are the people we follow. We follow their way. And this is the tradition we uphold in the world, insha'Allah ta'ala. Insha'Allah ta'ala. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, let us be builders, not people who tear down. Anyone can tear down. But how many people can build? It's easy to tear down. It's easy to undermine. It's easy to destroy. But how difficult is it to build something meaningful, principled, and lasting in this world? May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be people of principle. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be people who build up. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be people who protect that which has been built and is of value. May we be the protectors and preservers of that. May we be people who embody the fullness of the prophetic legacy. People who body, embody the patience that Abdul Qadir al-Jazairi al-Amir talked about, rahimahullah. May we be patient. May we be dignified. May we, when, may we be steadfast in adhering to the prophetic teachings and to upholding them, being their standard bearers in a world gone mad. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with inner peace and tranquility. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with courage to maintain principles in the face of all odds and condemnation. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to uphold and protect and preserve and advance the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this world, أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء ولسائر المؤمنين يا قوم استغفر الله. The beautiful religion. May we be beautiful people. Inna Allah al-Jameel yuhibbul jamaa. Allah is beautiful, He loves beauty. May we beautify ourselves with patience. When we beautify ourselves with, with principle. May, when we, when, may we beautify ourselves, beauty, beautify ourselves with lofty character, not base character. May we beautify ourselves by upholding the sanctity of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established. When we, may, may we beautify ourselves by fully appreciating the, life, the rights of brotherhood and sisterhood that we have over each other. May we, may we beautify ourselves by being those who contribute to a safer and sounder world with whatever resources or means or skills or abilities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless us with. And just one correction, the hadith we mentioned, we were confused at the beginning. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man a'ana ala qatli mu'min, walaw bi shatri kalima, yalqa Allah maktubun bayna aynayhi ayisun min rahmatillah. So whoever assists in the killing of a believer, Man a'ana ala qatli mu'min, even by uttering half a word, law bi shatri kalima, so this is the accurate rendition So may Allah Ta'ala bless us May bless all of you Enjoy the blessings Allah has given you And amongst the greatest of those blessings Is the blessing of security This is a great great blessing Enjoy it don't do anything to undermine it, and Allah will give us an increase. And may Allah extend this to all of our brothers and sisters anywhere in this world. The blessings of food. الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ 
the blessings of food and safety. These are great blessings. Allah mawfil min muslimin wal muslimat, wal mu'minin wal mu'minat, al ahya'i min hum wal amwat, rabbana la tuzil kudubana, بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الضحاب ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين وعفو عنا ووفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله